Are you a member of, were you a member of Skull Grove from college with Bush? Were you in the same secret society as Bush? Were you in Are you kidding? They're me! He's got a taser on his chest, I mean. Look, man, I didn't do anything! Don't tase me, bro! Don't tase me! I didn't do anything! Ow! Ow! We pride ourselves with the free press. I do not believe the free press is free anymore. It's certainly the, the uh, stories that were told all, about all about 9-11 were false. Conspiracy theories. They consider, they've been crazy, but now they must they're right. New questions tonight about an Army combat brigade being trained to deal with civil disturbances in the United States. The Posse Comitatus Act of 1878 generally prohibits federal uniform services from carrying out domestic law enforcement duties, except in cases expressly authorized by the Constitution or an act of Congress. Officials at Georgetown University covered a monogram symbolizing the name of Jesus because it was inscribed on the stage where the president spoke Tuesday. Critics say the brigade's training goes against one of the founding principles of our country, separation of military and civilian government. Luis Giovoni has our report. They've spent 30 months on the streets of Baghdad. Now the 1st Brigade combat team of the Army's 3rd Infantry Division is back in the USA. The Army Times reporting, quote, they may be called upon to help with civil unrest and crowd control or to deal with potentially horrific scenarios, end quote. The question arises, why? And isn't that what the National Guard does? Infantry Brigade is designed to engage an enemy with maximum effective force and destroy it. That's not the sort of thing anybody wants to see in, in the streets of the United States. The White House asked for all symbols to be covered at the lecture hall. Almost 5,000 strong, the brigade is based at Fort Stewart, Georgia, under control of Northern Command, who tells CNN, quote, the primary purpose of this force is to provide help to people in need in the aftermath of a WMD-like event in the homeland, so that were they called to support civil authority, those governors or local state jurisdictions that might need our help, that they would be responsive and capable in the aftermath of an event like this. University spokeswoman tells Cybercast News, quote, the White House wanted a simple backdrop consistent with, with what they've done for other policy speeches. The monogram, IHS, which comes from the Greek for Jesus, was covered with a triangle of black painted plywood. Coordination of international regulation. What they are going to do is to put our Fed and our SEC under the control, in effect, of the IMF. Catholic League President Bill Donahue says, quote, The cowardice of Georgetown to stand fast on principle tells us more than we need to know. But the bigger story is the audacity of the Obama administration to ask a religious school to neuter itself before the president speaks there. Oh, come on. They're going to take do this. That's what was in the draft agenda. They call it coordination of regulation. What it really is, is putting the American economy under international regulation. And those people who have been yelling, oh, the UN's going to take over global conspiracy theories. They consider it, they've been crazy, but now they they're right. Yeah, well, when Geiger, happening. when Geiger said it would be open to the idea of a global currency last exactly. week, yeah. those conspiracy people had said and suggested that for years. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. And you know, it's... What they always do at these conferences is they have the, the center show is here yeah. and the side show they don't want you to pay attention to. Right. The center show is the size of the stimulus packages. Yeah. The real show is international regulation of the financial institutions, which is going to happen under the IMF control. And remember, the IMF is run by Europeans, right. the World Bank by Americans. I am <clears throat> Major General Albert Stubblebein. I am retired Army Major General. In my last assignment, my last command, I was responsible for all of the Army's strategic intelligence forces around the world. The uh, stories that were told all, about all about 9-11 were false. I mean, you take a look at the buildings falling down. They didn't fall down because airplanes hit them. They fell down because of explosives went off into the demolition. Look at, look at Building 7. It didn't fall down to its side. It didn't fall this direction or that direction. 
just like the two towers. When you look at the temperatures that can you can create with fuel in, an, in an, uh, a gas tank or a fuel tank of an airplane, and then you investigate the amount of heat that it would be required to melt, to melt the superstructure of the buildings, uh, you know, that came tumbling down. When you put all of that together, the one thing that shows it does not match the facts. What is it they do not want the public to know? Hello, everybody. Their skills match up to the work of the future. We cannot sustain. Oops. Was that my, uh... oh goodness, that's all right. All of you know who I am. Obama is a radical communist, and I think it's becoming clear. That's what I told people in Illinois, and now everybody realizes it's true. But I'm sure there's somebody back there that's really nervous right now. He's going to destroy this country. We're either going to stop him. abomination. He is someone who has actually advocated infanticide, that when babies are the target of abortion, if they happen to escape the abortionist's intention and are born alive, he actually supported the idea that those babies should be set aside to die. <laughs> Don't you think? They're sweating bullets back there right now. That is a man with such a seared conscience, I can't even understand why anybody in their right mind would consider him worthy of political support. That's a violation of conscience that is inconceivable. And even some of the most hardline pro-abortion people in America rejected that abomination, and he did not. So what does tonight mean when President Obama is, is, is president of the United States? How does, how does is he? Play That's another question. Is he president of the United States? According to the Constitution, in order to be eligible for president, you have to be a natural-born citizen. We cannot sustain. Oops. Was that my, uh... uh... He has refused to provide proof that he is, in fact, a natural-born citizen. And his Kenyan relations say that he was born in Nairobi at a time when his mother was too young to transmit U.S. citizenship. So I'm not even sure he's president of the United States. No, that's not a laughing matter. Neither are many of our military people now who are going to court to ask the question, do we have to obey a man who is not qualified under the Constitution? We're in the midst of the greatest crisis this nation has ever seen. And if we don't stop laughing about it and deal with it, we're going to find ourselves in the midst of chaos, confusion, and civil war. <laughs> this is insanity. It's as if we have put insane children and adolescents in charge of our government. And I think we need to ask simple questions. A couple of years ago, we were arguing over every penny in the United States budget, and it was quite clear we didn't have enough money to go around. Well, somebody asked me where we came up with $2 trillion in the course of the last six months. Did we wish for it out of the air? Have people gone mad in this country? You don't have that money. We are claiming that a bankrupt government can save a bankrupt banking system. Explain to me how that happens, because I think that's impossible. And the fact that we have just elected an individual who may or may not be qualified, and he presents silly ideas like this and says, let's move forward now, and we're all acting like the laws of economics have been repealed, and we can actually afford to put the bill with money nobody's got. This is insane. It's got to lead to the collapse of our economy. And it's going to. You need to wake up now. Wake up!
of its founders. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders.